my name is Gordon. Uh, I'm a writer, reader, and I'm a public library worker as well. And today we're going to be having a look at some books that, that I've been reading and getting interested in, um, all of which you can get um, from your local, serb local library service, certainly down here in Cardiff. It can usually be requested from, from anywhere across Wales as well. Um, so, all of our titles today are, uh, are poetry titles. We're going to be looking at po uh, poems uh, mostly published by Seren, who have uh, the Seren Cardiff Poetry Festival coming up very soon as well. And I wanted to just take a moment to say that first of all, that talking about poetry is interesting for me because I'm not I'm not an academic. I'm not in any way schooled uh, in poetry or have a degree in creative writing. Nothing of that sort. Um, a very, very kind and lovely poet once asked me in passing, uh, was it an MA that I had? And I remarked, well, I've got an NVQ and I believe that's fairly similar. So that kind of gives you an idea of where I am coming from. Um, so I think it's very important to, to get across the point that you do not have to have um, tremendous amount of schooling to, to be interested and to enjoy poetry, uh, contemporary poetry or whatever is your bag. So I wanted to start today um, by talking um, about uh, 163 Days by Hannah Hodgson. Uh, Hannah Hodgson um, is a young disabled poet who, as I say, is published by Saren. And this book is split into two sections. Um, now, the first larger section of the book, 163 Days, is a, a series that follows her as she's very young at this point just 17 through of a long period um, of hospitalization dealing with um, very complex um, health problems and the age of 17 is very important and she explains um, the poems are set out almost as a daily journal and on the 11th of march here we hear the following the children's hospital have a policy not to operate on over 16s, while well, the adult hospital refuses to operate on under 18s. Age 17, I'm stuck in my cage of illness, while two departments with bolt cutters argue over who should let me out. And that gives you a little clue to the experience that she's, uh, she's going through while these poems are being written. These poems um, within the sequence 163 days, um, which are accompanied by my medical notes these can be quite quite difficult quite emotional to read it's a a, a grueling experience that the, the very young person in these poems is, is going through um part of the book that i i really loved is the the latter section which is called uh, aftercare relating to, to poems which is out of hospital and engaging with life as a as a young disabled adult um now um these poems then have uh sort of more time and space to to bloom um, there are poems about being dead, there are poems about selling your organs, um, about not being able to have children. But these are often punctuated with, with slivers of, of black humour at the same time. Um, I particularly enjoyed in the poem, I wear a set of lungs as a necklace, where, um, where the poet talks about going to church. And uh, I'll read you one uh, little stanza here. Once my carer's belt got hooked onto my wheelchair and in a silent chapel, she panic farted. It happened because I can't drink blood or let Christ's flesh dissolve on my tongue. It happened as a trial. Now I love that because I'm a very big fan for one thing of phrases that you just do not get in poems at all and I don't know when I'm ever going to read the phrase hyphenated I should add panic farted in a poem ever again as long as I live and that's something I think to be greatly admired. But in all seriousness, it does, these poems are, are, are deft, um, these little shots of humour um, really enliven them and uh, it's certainly a collection that brings you right fully, uh, immerses you if you like into the, into the life of a young disabled adult um, and it's definitely uh, worth reading. Um, I would recommend this to, to pretty much to anybody and there's beautiful lines in it um, from, from start to finish really. So uh, yes, yeah, 163 Days by, by Hannah Hodgson. Okay, next up we're going to have a look at uh, the book uh, Inhale Exile by Abir Amir. Um, as a declaration, I do know um, Abir just a little bit. So I was delighted when I heard that she had a collection coming out um, through Saren. And 
one thing that I found very interesting was that um, the works I'd heard previously um, by Abir um, had beautiful detail and uh, a very specific um, melancholy through them. There was something gentle about them, often regarding family, often regarding regarding Iraq, where her family are from. Um, however, when this book came out and I read this, I was taken aback by the, the sheer range um, of, of styles and of topics um, and how hard-hitting it is. Um, poems um, about, about displacement, about exile, um, about hiding from people who wish to do you harm, about bombs, about invasions, um, about death. Um, so it's a, a, a very, very highly stimulating mix of, of subject matter um, that's very emotional, um, it's sensitively done, um, it has um, a very uh, useful uh, glossary of terms at the back as well. People like me who do not necessarily know all the terms used. And within there's lots of reference, uh, references to, to Iraq, um, to the Quran, and it is um, a fantastic journey through the last 20 odd years really, and the experiences of people, particularly those who were um, involved in that period in around 2003 with the invasion of Iraq, the death of Saddam Hussein. Now, uh, one of my um, favourite moments um, in the book is um, from the poem Iraqi Bride in Transit, um, which um, takes place um, in, a, in an airport. Um, and I'll read a little line for you here. Um, announcement. Groom is summoned to immigration. Your wife says you do drugs. He realises at that moment he should have taught his bride the correct English term for pharmacy student. So again, there are little moments of, of humour in amongst the, the, you know, some very serious and emotional topics. Um, it's a beautiful book. I'm very, very happy um, for Abia. Uh, this is out in the world and she's getting the, the recognition for this book that it certainly deserves. The book is also um, shortlisted for the Wales Book of the Year um, this year. And uh, so obviously wish her the very best of luck um, with that. Next up, we're going to have a look at the book All the Men I Never Married by Kim Moore. Um, Kim's name is probably quite recognisable to anyone with interest in contemporary poetry. And uh, this is a second collection um, after a first, uh, The Art of Falling, um, which I like very much. Uh, that is a book that had a, a central uh, sequence called um, How I Abandoned My Body to Its Keeping, uh, which related to um, a, a relationship with elements of abuse and, and potentially violence. Um, subjects that come up once again um, at times in this collection, which is, um, has a very specific form. Um, the poems are, are not conventionally titled, they're numbered. And in each one, or almost each one, um, the poet looks at um, a man they come into contact with. Perhaps this could have been a long-term relationship. Perhaps it was something shorter. Perhaps these are people that she's just encountered for a moment, for good or for bad. Um, it's a collection that deals with, with desire and love and pain. And, and it deals with men. It deals with entitlement in many cases. Entitlement it deals with violence and the threat of violence. Um, it's a very urgent um, collection uh, and it can be again enjoyed by, by anybody because it is very easy to read as much as it deals in some cases with, with, with a difficult subject. Um, one I particularly enjoyed, or two if you like, um, is poem number 11 which begins with the line once I knew a man who thought he knew everything. I often returned from work to find him asleep in my bed. It was like the sun had slipped itself between the sheets, or a lion or something else born golden and sure of itself. And it ends with the line, This was why he was the way he was, as if he'd been touched and turned to gold by a foolish, laughing king. Which I think is a glorious line. What makes it better is this is, is paired on the, on the facing page of poem 12 
which talks about um, where she's given a reading, including this very poem, and a man waits around to, to give her his opinion on this poem and uh, about that about his his view that perhaps it was objectifying men and it was not a balanced poem and couldn't the man in the poem have been made a bit more rounded and likable um so this gives you um a little um a little glimpse into the, into the collection here which um again shows a a, a real mastery of a form it's um it's beautiful it's lyrical in places um and there's a, a, a beautiful quote from Jonathan Edwards, which describes the poems as, as deeply empathetic, um, unforgettable, and, and transcendent. And I think all that is is very much uh, very much true. Uh, this is also, I believe, um, shortlisted for the uh, Forward Prize um, for Best Collection, which is coming up soon, and uh, we'll see what happens there. But again, best of luck to Kim Moore for that. Okay, next we're going to be looking at um, the Estate Agent's Daughter by Rian Edwards. Again, this is a, a second um, full collection. And uh, Rian's also appearing at the uh, Seren, uh, the Cardiff Poetry Festival. Um, this is a collection I'm still working my way through, um, but uh, there's much to enjoy in this. Um, there's uh, poems about domesticity, um, about relationships, um, uh, an enjoyable um, poem perhaps the only kind of poem you might see on, on this very theme, called Poems in the Dock, which is about how uh, Rian's own poems were used um, within her divorce hearing and were, were being used against her by her ex-partner. So the poems find themselves interrogated. Um, that's a very enjoyable one to read. Um, I was also um, very um, struck with uh, Argos Wedding, which is in two parts. Um, which talks about um, the experience of, of getting married, almost Vegas style, although in Manhattan, in a sort of conveyor belt of, of brides um, in America. Um, the line that always sticks in my head, perhaps in the collection, is simply, who knew you could buy a wedding bouquet from a vending machine? And that gives you um, a, a little clue as to the, the feel of that. And the second part is about um, shattering, accidentally shattering the mirror in your compact and feeling like you've, you've cursed something and being looked at with daggers by the, uh, the rest of the queue of brides. Um, uh, that's a, a beautiful pair of poems. Um, so as I say, I've still got much to go um, in uh, this collection. So yes, there are poems about um, motherhood, family, relationships, illness, uh, wandering around Tesco somewhat aimlessly. There's uh, a lot to enjoy. Um, Rin's the um, joint poetry editor of Saren at the moment. Um, her first collection, Clueless Dogs, uh, was a Wales Book of the Year winner a few years ago. Um, and she's uh, a great, very sort of vibrant and exciting reader of her work. Um, famously so, so um, she'll be appearing at the festival and she'll be definitely worth checking out there or any chance you do get to, to see her read. So that's The Estate Agent's Daughter. Okay, another book we're going to be looking at today is this one, which is A God at the Door by Tishani Doshi. Um, Tishani's a, a poet of um, Welsh Gujarati descent, um, currently living in India. And uh, she was a winner of the, the Forward Prize for, for Best First Collection a number of years ago. Uh, she attracted a lot of praise for her previous book, Girls Are Coming Out of the Woods. Uh, with strong feminist themes in that book particularly. Um, she was also a, a dancer. Um, she feels like someone who is, has fully, truly hit their stride. Um, and this is, this is a collection. Well, not published by Sound in this case, published by Blood Axe. Um, although she was a guest at last year's um, Poetry Festival. Uh, this is a, a collection with um, so much in terms of its depth and breadth. Um, it's one that you can live inside for a long, long time and continue to keep finding new things. Um, it's, it's difficult to describe um, in some ways, just due to, as I say, due to its breadth of style. Um, it's a, a collection that can uh, address um, can address uh, violence, um, uh, genocide, um, politics, um, and um, Kim Kardashian's buttocks. It can do anything. Um, again, as I might have mentioned today, once or twice already, I'm a, a, a personally a big fan of poets that can address. Um, 
important, difficult topics, um, but are able to throw you a little bit off guard and to throw in a little slivers of humour, um, which is why it's nice alongside um, some of the longer poems. Oh, I should interrupt myself to say that her ability to, to sustain a poem, a longer poem, is, is remarkable. Um, you also have shorter poems, such as, and you may note if you can see it, the shape on the page, a poem called The Comeback of Speedos, um, <laughs> which is uh, an absolute delight. Um, there is much, much to enjoy um, in this collection. You have poems called In a Dream I Give Birth to a Sumo Wrestler, Why the Brazilian Butt Lift Won't Save Us. Um, alongside poems about stormtroopers in her country, about loneliness, about pilgrimages, and about poetry. Um, there is stuff to keep you going for probably a thousand years. Um, so yeah, I could probably go on about this collection for, for quite some time, uh, but needless to say, um, it's uh, one I would very, very strongly recommend. So all the books that we've been looking at today um, are available um, from your library service um, in Cardiff and uh, they'll be available at many library services throughout Wales or they can be, be requested. You can check your library services online catalogue um, for this. Um, we've been talking about the Seren um, Poetry Festival. Some of the, uh, the poets involved are um, uh, appearing, including um, Abir and, uh, and Rian. Uh, their uh, festival is taking place um, we are at the, uh, the, the last weekend of July, Friday to Sunday, and DLs um, are available on the, the festival website. Um, I should also give a quick mention, uh, whilst I'm uh, talking today very much in a, in a non work in a personal capacity, um, for uh, Cardiff locals, um, if you're interested in literary events, uh, the Library Service uh, does a series of events called Open Space, uh, which can cover poetry, fiction, sometimes non-fiction. So keep an eye on the Cardiff Library's um, social media and Eventbrite page. Um, for that, um, that's uh, easily Googleable, um, and uh, there are events uh, taking place uh, coming up in the autumn, including uh, one by uh, Christopher Anstey, who's uh, a local author with his memoir Polish the Cr Polish of the Crown, I should say, uh, which is about growing up as a, a young gay man in the valleys, and that's coming up just before um, Cardiff Pride towards the end of August. So. Uh, don't forget you can uh, get all these books, as I say, uh, from the library service and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon.